This is the Schrodinger equation, which we use to describe a particle's behavior in quantum mechanics. The yellow character is called the wave function, which contains all the information we need to talk about the particle. The wave function is dependent on position and time. This is the picture of the wave function at time t and might change like a wave at later times. Psi squared represents the probability of finding the particle at x at time t. It's very important that the area under the psi squared graph is 1 at any time because the particle should be found somewhere in this space. Now the question is how to find psi using the Schrodinger equation. Before doing so, let's talk about V, the potential energy influencing the particle. It can be a function of x and t, but for now we suppose that it doesn't vary with time and it's just dependent on x. To solve the Schrodinger equation, we use a method called separation of variables. We just focus on solutions which are products of a function of x and a function of t. So the Schrodinger equation becomes like this. Because the lowercase psi is just a function of x and phi is just a function of t. By rearranging the equation like this, now the left side is just a function of t and the right side is just a function of x. Note that we suppose that v is just a function of x. Suppose that we have two functions, f of x and g of t, which are equal to each other. Let's fix x and change t. As t changes, g of t must remain constant and equal to the fixed f of x. So, g of t must be constant. Similarly, f of x is also constant and equal to g of t. We name the constant e. Now we have two equations to solve a time-dependent equation and a time-independent equation. Let's first solve the time-dependent one. Pay attention that we haven't considered a constant factor as a result of integration in the third line. Because the whole answer is a product of phi and psi, and we consider this constant for the time-independent equation. Now we move on to the time-independent equation, which is known as the time-independent Schrodinger equation. Let's rewrite this equation in a way that operator p hat appears. We can introduce a new operator called h hat, which is like the Hamiltonian in classical mechanics. And finally, the time independent Schrodinger equation can be written as h psi equals e psi. So far, we have these two expressions. If we calculate psi squared, it is equal to psi lowercase squared. And to find the expectation value of any function, we just need to use the lowercase psi. The expectation value of the Hamiltonian is e, and the expectation value of h2 is e2. So the variance yields 0, and its distribution has 0 spread. And now we can see why e has been chosen as the constant, because every measurement of the total energy yields e, the total energy of the particle. For energy level e, we have this wave function, but is it the only possibility? This is just one solution, and we might have other possible solutions. So the general solution to the Schrodinger equation is a linear combination of all possible answers. The last thing we need to solve is the time-independent Schrodinger equation, which yields lowercase psi. There isn't a general solution to this equation because it depends on V, the potential energy. There are some popular cases for potential energy that we'll discuss in other videos.